Hey there, Sarah here, and in today's vlog, I wanna share with you my number one struggle, like my biggest source of frustration, and what I'm doing to deal with that. I wanna share with you, well, my biggest source of frustration with my training at this time. And I want you to see exactly how I approach this on a daily basis so that I don't end up just having a temper tantrum and throwing in the towel. Although I do have my moments. Okay, enjoy. Before I begin, I want to share my ultimate goal with you. That's to be able to hold a handstand every single time I try. And to be able to do tricks with handstands, such as handstand walks. I would love to be able to chase my cats on my hands. Now, the problem is that I can't consistently do this because I lack overhead mobility. And that's why I'm so frustrated. So locking our arms out overhead, ideally we want 180 degrees of shoulder flexion. But if you can't do that using the correct muscles, then you're setting yourself up for problems. So for example, on the left, I'm at 180 degrees of shoulder flexion, but I have to compensate with my upper traps. Can you see how I'm shrugging my shoulders up towards my ears? Whereas on the right side, you can see I'm not shrugging, but I also don't have as much range of motion. So again, on the right side, you can see I have about 160 degrees of shoulder flexion, but I have all the right muscles engaged. Whereas on the left side, I'm cheating by arching my low back and shrugging up. The problem with compensating is that it can set you up for a lot of problems. Take a look at this next photo. Can you see there's something wrong with my left shoulder, how I'm shrugging up using my left upper trap? Well, that's a sign that there's some pretty major muscles that aren't doing their job. So the problem with this is that it leads to decreased mobility, range of motion, active range of motion, on the left side, which is why I can't do handstands or any of the cool things I want to be able to do, like muscle ups. And well, it could eventually lead to neck and shoulder pain and tingles going down the arm. Fortunately, I never had neck or shoulder pain. So let's take a look at which muscles are not working. There are four very important muscles. I call them the quartet. They stabilize the shoulder joint. This includes the lats, the teres majors, which are the upper lats, they spread your lats. The pec major, which you know that you use in bench press or cable flies, as well as the short head of the bicep, the inside bicep. All four of these muscles are crucial to shoulder joint stability. Let's take a look at the shoulder joint and how the quartet muscles play a role in scapular and shoulder joint stabilization. So notice that the huge quartet muscles, well actually there's only three of them in this photo, the teres major, the lats, and the pec major. Notice where they're located and what they're attaching to. Okay, you can see that they're attaching to your arm bone. So what happens if these muscles are weak? The upper trap, as I mentioned, compensates. So this means that the upper trap is going to hike the head of your humerus or arm bone up into your shoulder joint. And this is going to potentially impinge on your rotator cuff and cause a whole bunch of symptoms. So that's why I could not emphasize enough the importance of strengthening the quartet. The quartet is going to allow you to be able to do pressing motions and overhead motions without buggering up your shoulder or your neck. You're going to have much better shoulder mobility if these muscles are strong throughout the full range of motion. I wanted to show you how my teres major is visibly smaller on the left compared to the right side. I colored them in yellow. The same is true for my lats. The lat is smaller on the left side. You can't really tell in this photo, but the upper trap on the left side is huge, which is a sign that it's been compensating for my little teeny weeny teres major and lat on the left side. So be observant, check out your symmetry or lack thereof. That's gonna give you clues. So the whole purpose of this vlog is to show you how I'm strengthening my quartet so that I can do all the cool things I wanna be able to do in life. So here I'm doing the T-spine opener. This improves thoracic spine mobility. So this is gonna demand good external oblique mobility. That's why I have a kettlebell on my lower abdomen to engage my external obliques. 
and I'm keeping my pec majors engaged the entire time. No shrugging up. Hammer curls. Again, I'm using the entire quartet here and I feel like I'm going to die. You can see that I'm doing this very slow. If you can do something slow, then you can do it fast, but not necessarily the other way around. So here I am pressing two plates together, keeping my entire quartet engaged throughout the full range of motion that I have. This is very challenging for me. I want to compensate in external torque. I do this weird gimpy thing with my left wrist. So I'm really focusing on using my pecs the whole time, smashing those plates together. Here you can see it from the side view. So my external obliques are engaged, my glute max, I'm squeezing the daylights out of it. You can see my Terry's majors are also engaged. Now here, again, I'm working the full quartet, especially the Terry's major. Boy, I struggle. I do not have good mobility on the left side, which is why I'm spending a little bit more attention on my left side, but I do it bilaterally as well. The key is knowing when to stop. When do you know your true mobility is over? I mean, if you go any further, you're just gonna compensate with the wrong muscles. Well, the secret to that is your breathing. You cannot inhale beyond your true mobility, and I'm gonna to touch on that later in the vlog with other examples. It's a bit difficult with these examples because I'm moving so slowly. So in this particular exercise, I'm trying to think of pressing my elbows in towards each other and pressing my hands in towards each other as if I was smashing the dumbbell to keep the pecs engaged. Well, the whole quartet is engaged. No arching of the low back at all. External obliques are engaged. The same here. My pecs are engaged, which is why I like the sandbag because I'm smashing my hands into the sides of the sandbag to activate the pecs and my external obliques are engaged as I press up, trying not to arch the low back. How else do I work the quartet? Well, by doing chin-ups, by lowering myself very slowly on the eccentric. I video myself square on so I can see if I am shifting. And you can see that I'm tight on the left side. Do you see how I kind of deviate in a weird way on the left? push-ups in super slow motion. Notice how I am trying to not use the quartet on the left side. Watch my left hand. Do you see how it's kind of supinating upwards? I am trying so hard to compensate. My body does not like doing what it's supposed to do, unfortunately, <laughs> but I will overcome. So here I am working with Coach Gus, again, on the quartet. I'm using a false grip on the rings. And, oh, you can really see my Terry's major popping there on the side. And we're doing isometric holds. And we're also lowering eccentrically in super slow motion, trying to keep the pec majors, short head of the biceps, Terry's major engaged. And there, see he's poking my external obliques, making sure they're also engaged. Here you can see I'm not strong enough. I'm shrugging up with the upper traps. Uh, but... This gave me a good list of homework that I need to work on so that that will stop happening because my goal eventually is to be able to do a ring muscle up. So I work at home using my pulleys, trying not to shrug with the upper traps. I'm really trying to focus on using my Terry's major, keeping those pecs engaged the whole time. So let's talk about what mobility is. Mobility is your ability to maintain tension in the correct muscles throughout your full range of motion. So I can't do that on the left side with my quartet. And well, people in the Cirque du Soleil sure can. They can generate tension in their correct muscles at extreme end ranges, which is why they're so amazingly strong. Okay, what am I doing here? I am doing chin over bar holds. And notice I vary the grip. Sometimes I do it supinated, sometimes I do it pronated. I lower down in slow motion. Whoever can lower down the slowest wins. Maintaining, again, the correct muscles engaged. It's very easy to compensate and switch into external torque or just shrug up. Um, so it's a case of really concentrating on the muscles that you're using. And it takes time to figure that out. 
I would not recommend trying this until you have excellent shoulder stability. I shouldn't even be doing it, but I wanted to try it. Okay, so rope pulls. These are the best medicine for improving your teres majors. The chest faces the floor so that you're going to focus on using your lats more and your biceps less. If you're feeling it a lot in your biceps, well, that's a sign that your teres majors and lats aren't doing their job. All right, pectoral hell holds. Lots of themes and variations of these. Notice how Coach Gus actually makes it harder for me by pulling my arm away, so I have to really engage my pec. And again, you saw me doing this before, the pressing of the two plates together, but I'm also doing it on the GHD to really activate the internal torque chain. So it's forcing me to use my external obliques, my inner hamstrings, my chest muscles, I find this so hard on the left side. It's amazing, like, when you don't use a muscle properly for, well, 30 plus years, it's really hard to fix it. But I believe it's fixable. I know it is. I've improved so much. So I encourage you to try the hammer curls. I'm doing those a little bit faster than I'd like to be doing. That's better. I like that pace more. Really concentrating on keeping the entire quartet engaged throughout the full range of motion, never ever losing tension in the quartet. Leaning against the wall helps to keep the external obliques engaged. I like this approach because you can smash your hands into the ball to really activate your chest muscles. Okay, this is the pec delt burner. I actually shot a video on this so you could do it with me in real time. So stay tuned for that. Once again, I'm leaning against the wall to make sure I'm using the external obliques, the entire internal torque chain. And it's a tab in it, 20 seconds of doing the chest raises, and then 10 seconds of doing the Hercules hold with the palms up. It really sucks. Okay, here I've got a 25 pound plate, and I'm doing 25 front deltoid raises into 25 overhead triceps extensions and again I'm working within the range that I do have the whole idea is that we're using the correct muscles the entire time I wish I could press more in the frontal plane but I guess that'll come with time as my mobility improves all right I love the sandbag floor press because you can really concentrate on keeping your pecs engaged notice that my legs are flat out so that way there's less leg drive and it really forces me to use my pecs. I'm using my external obliques when I press up too. Push-ups! Nice and slowly and controlled. Really using those external obliques when I press up. Same with the barbell floor press. Pay attention to just how much pec training I'm doing. I mean, all I've been talking about is pec training since we started this vlog. Chest cable flies. The chest press machine. I also like the decline press. And you see I use a bench for this. And some dumbbells. And, of course, the bench press. Try to film yourself in a way so you can see if you have symmetry or not. If you don't, well, that's a wake-up call. I also train my chest by doing the dips. Let's talk about shoulder overhead pressing. Now, I'm a fan of the sand bag because it makes it a lot easier for me to use the quartet. The barbell, however, makes it really easy for me to use my upper trap. So that's why I don't use the barbell. At least not now. I'm not, I'm not ready for it. Lots of Z pressing. Really trying my damn does not to let that left upper trap get involved. Oh, it burns. The shoulder press machine at the global gym. I'm just really thinking about not shrugging up on the left. So that means really using the pec, the lat, the teres major on the left. And then I just practice holding it. I mean, if I want to be able to hold a handstand, I better at least be able to hold this. Bean, Coco, little kitty cat relief here. And then we're going to move along to external torque, the lats. First thing you notice is that nice little deviation I have going on there. Not surprising because we know I'm weaker on the left side. Some days I don't know, I'm just symmetrical and everything's great. Other days it's, especially when I'm tired, 
you really see the deviation happening. But that's why I like to film myself square on so that I can really get intercept feedback and concentrate on what I'm doing and try and ameliorate the situation. If you can't see what you're doing, you're not getting feedback, then how do you know what you're doing wrong and how do you know what to fix? So, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that I spend a lot of time trying to work on the lats. And you can see this is a really great opportunity to improve the shoulder mobility because I'm strengthening these muscles throughout the full range of motion. Oh, look at me getting all fancy with the weight hanging from me. Ideally, the weight should be coming behind me to get me into the proper torque, the external torque. I like to do the SOTS presses at the Globo Gym for the lats. And notice when I come back up that I'm not letting the shrugging happening. I'm really keeping that lat and Terry's major engaged. And when it's tight, like mine is on the left, oh my god, it feels like you're trying to stretch a stale piece of gum. It feels so weird. It's like... There's cobwebs inside my Terry's Major and my lat. So I want you to know that it is a very unpleasant feeling. It's not painful. It just feels tight as hell. All right, little kitty relief for us. So I want you to see just how much stronger my external obliques are getting. This is an important part of the internal torque chain. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. Watch this. Oh yes, I wanted to explain to you how breathing and mobility are related. You cannot inhale past your mobility. So for example, when you are descending into a squat, you inhale through your nose. The moment you can no longer inhale is when you stop descending into your squat. That is your official squat bottom position. Listen. You'll notice that I breathe out through pursed lips on the concentric aspect of all of my exercises. Why pursed lips? Well, pursed lip breathing creates a back pressure that keeps your airways open longer. It also decreases the work of breathing. It slows your breathing rate and it helps you stay relaxed. So this is a strategy that I use, especially when I'm doing things like sandbag carries, I will breathe in through my nose and then out through pursed lips and it helps me stay calmer longer which is why I'm able to get better and better at the sandbag carries. I do the sandbag carries almost every single day. This is like the best medicine. It helps to strengthen the internal torque chain so if you tend to get low back pain when you're doing stuff like this well, that's a sign that your internal torque chain sucks and you need to strengthen your external obliques. And that's the beauty of this exercise. It's going to show you your problem. It's going to give you feedback and it's going to also fix your problem if you stay the course. So I have my team assess working on this. I also like the sandbag carries because the way you bear hug the bag it forces you to activate your pecs. All right, so I didn't talk about lower body in this vlog, but I was thinking next week, maybe we should talk about the hip shift. You know, overcoming challenges it's not something that happens like that. It's not like you can expect instant gratification. It's one of those things where you have to stay the course. You have to be consistent and it takes a long friggin time. So I just wanted to share my story with you in case, you know, maybe you're going through something similar and it'll make you realize, hey, you're not alone.